Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch man, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about a little bit of Empire, a little bit of Fantastic Four, storyline, OP kit, gameplay, a little bit of seal discussion, a little bit of messing around with the new set. This is episode 397. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some more. Let's attack the because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. LH for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Joining me, like always, is your Dial H for Heroclix champion, Simeon. What's going on? Yeah, I'm also the world inscription champion right now, Calder. So Are you the world inscription champion? Do you have the I most uh highly doubt it. Can you can you see achievements to players? I Um Well there's definitely people that had it before me, so Well yeah, assuming, that's true. You know, true. since I, I didn't like stream it on YouTube, I'm probably like in the like low <sighs> low double digits. I don't know, like Probably, yeah. yeah, but definitely double digits, though. Yeah. You're definitely in the double digits. Yeah, yeah. No triple, yeah. no quadruple. None of those high yeah. numbers. No, 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 no. It's a great card game. Uh, it Good involves a lot of card game. a lot of sacrifice. You know, Gwent's been around for quite a while, and mm. uh, Inscription's a good card game, too, but um, that wasn't what I was... Referring you know, to we started talking about, about, about something I liked, Inscription, and then you had to bring up The Witcher with Gwent, and you really killed the whole vibe. I was really enjoying what we had going here. I was actually liking it, but <laughs> alas, so, now yeah. here we are. Moving into what made me happy this week, I, I have been playing a lot of it. If you haven't seen or, seen or heard of it, Inscription is a very strange, very like weird game. Uh, it's not multiplayer, but you do have an AI opponent, and you're essentially drawing from a deck that you can slowly build. So it's kind of a deck builder, kind of not. It's got a lot of weird other stuff going on. Um, but I've been streaming it in our Discord, and every so often someone will pop in or a couple people will pop in. At one point, we got up to, man, I think like five or six people. It was Yeah, like, it's a good amount. Yeah, we kind of got on a lot of off-topic, off-color topics. Yeah, I can't, I can't say everybody was uh, on the right, right track. You know, I just started talking about whatever when you're hanging with the bros. You know how it is, but uh, the Patreon members. But yeah, yeah, I. That's what made you happy this week. Is that 100 percent what we're going with? Yeah, legally, I can't speak about the other part until right, maybe next of course. week. So, um, uh, true. If that happens, you know? then I will I will retroactively say that that also made me happy okay. this week. Okay, interesting, interesting, nice. I like it. I like it. You know, so I will say, um, you got me addicted to it too because I saw you playing it and I'm like, gosh, that looks interesting and like really fun. And like, was it at like 12 a.m. Thursday night? I just bought it. I bought full price on Steam bought it i tried to look for it somewhere else i'm like you know whatever i literally yeah i like sold like some tf2 items to get what i needed for like 20 bucks on steam bought it i probably played it till like 4 a.m that night and then subsequently every night since then stayed up till at least two playing it and then played it <laughs> all day almost addictive. all day saturday it is dude it's i want to know more um but I, yeah for the listeners yeah. Definitely check out Inscription on Steam or Epic Game Stores where you got it, right, Simeon? I got it, and at the time, Epic Game Store had a $10 off coupon, so I just immediately used that for the game. Um, so it ended up costing me like 6 plus tax or something. Uh, oh, and nice. it's originally, so originally the game was like a beta release, and you can still find this. I did look it up. Uh, it originally was called Sacrifices Must Be Made, and you could get mm. that game, that like real short clip it game, uh, for free from like the guy's main website or whatever. Um, I will warn you that <laughs> that version is somehow much darker 
than inscription. Oh, really? Sacrifices must be made is like, yeah, just somehow a lot darker and weirder. Uh, but it has a lot of the same themes and the cards play a lot like very similar and stuff. It just doesn't have the big bulk of the story that is the main actual game. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, I don't know. It's one of those games where like, I did not expect this much going into it and it ended up being like way more than like, I would have been happy if it yeah. was just the base game that I thought it was going to be. And then it ended up being so much more and it was very interesting and I'll probably keep playing it for quite a while until I like start dreaming about drawing really cool how many, cards or something. So how many um oh what's it called? How many hours do you have in this game? Can you see your hours? Um because mine is on Epic Game Store. Let me see if So I I just finished it while we were talking earlier. I saw the credits roll and okay. everything in my you know my game did the the thing. Right. Um not spoiler it but, um, and it took me uh, is it says fifteen point two hours on my Steam, and honestly, probably most of that is spent in the first part of the game. Yeah, I think the first part once, of the game like seems like it's the full game. Yeah, like it's the full game. Yeah, you think it's yeah. a a roguelike type Binding of Isaac style game where it's maybe you just keep running through the first part and the first part. Um, not to get too spoilery, but guys, really, um, and I'm really fighting hard to make this not what made me happy yeah. this week. Um, because it seems strange uh, when you say a video game is what you made you happy, right? But I mean, that was the same for like Doom Eternal and stuff, but it was a little unhealthy staying up as late as I did playing this game <laughs> uh, for it to be what made me happy this week, oh. but it was fun. It's like, it's like a really fun game. It has a Undertale-esque, um, story-ish Yeah, maybe a dark, I mean, it's, you there's know, like a similar. Story. There's like a base yeah. story and then there's like a behind the scenes story and then there's right. like the the actual action that is happening kind of thing so it yeah. is a one of those very interesting like and i wish i knew more about like the developer because i'm sure they've made other interesting games so games, it's probably yeah. anyone that follows that developer is like of course it's a good game but um so keep in mind i did have the game running in the background while i was afk for a while but sure. according to Epic Games Store, I've played it 18 hours and 37 minutes. Okay. And I yeah. can't remember when I actually bought it because that seems like a lot in such a short period of time. It is. It is wild. I, and I know my hours were probably cut down because I saw you like play it a little bit. I'm like, oh, I kind of figured like got the gist of it. Um, so like probably my favorite card. So every time you die... Uh, you get to make a card. And I have a one blood cost. Uh, for some listeners that don't know what this is, it's not going to make any sense. Uh, but it's a seven health, seven attack, which is really high yeah, um, that's card. Yeah. But it has has the fish symbol. Uh, so I okay, called him Namor. So, yeah. But I had to call him Namor. You know what I mean? Just super strong fish guy. Because there's no other super strong fish character I can so possibly think for, of. For listeners that... To bring this to like, this would be this card would be like a epic monster in like Magic or Pokemon or whatever. It'd be like a very good one that only cost one mana to cost, like to cast it. Right. And oh, uh, I have a the fish symbol means that it can't be attacked on your opponent's turns. That like right. it essentially gets underwater. So, yeah, it's doing seven damage and just that probably like instantly wins you if you get it at the beginning of the like if in your draw yeah. hand. That just instantly yeah. ruins that game for you most times. Game. Oh, dude. So my other card that I made, which is also busted, is um, is a zero cost, seven for seven. And then it has the undying symbol. So when it dies, it goes back into my hand. Oh. And that card is actually busted. Yeah, that, actually... that one's broken. I called it Tamina, which if you've seen Gurren Lagann, you know it's not technically true. But uh, I had to for my boy, for, for my favorite anime character. I probably should have called it... <laughs> Optimus Prime for coming back to life a million times or something, but I don't know. No, but I, or uh, Mr. Immortal, but you'd have to have weak stats and come back to life to be Mr. Immortal. Um, but yeah, I'll like probably stream it's it crazy some more fun randomly throughout. Like you know, whenever I figure whenever I'm playing it, I might as well stream it. It doesn't cost me anything, and if no one watches, yeah. it doesn't cost me anything. So it's just like might as well. Uh, sure. and if someone wants to pop in and watch, then they can. But it, yeah. It's one of those games I – so I had a very different style of meta playing through mine where my totems were just really busted. And so I had, like, these really 
and this is again anyone that hasn't played the game or seen any of it has no idea but um so i like was like oh man it's kind of disappointing that this game's like turning out to be this easy when i like you know play it this way and then all of a sudden like about midway through the game it just like flips everything on its head and i'm no longer good at the game anymore and i have to <laughs> rebuild it uh, back like completely yes. yes like start from scratch and then it does it a third time and i was like man i do not know if i like it was probably i don't know i won't say one of the most challenging games but it was like just such a like really good way of keeping me uh engaged and which is probably why i put so much time into it over the last yeah. couple like, i guess in like 9 days said i bought it on the the first of the year so uh i think gosh i want to keep talking about it but we are a hero close podcast so we are contractually obligated to talk about it. this isn't dial i uh, for inscriptions sadly um but it's really good i really do i i feel weird urging the listeners to check out a uh card game that yeah. card game video game that isn't hero clicks if but, you you know if you don't want to yeah. like oh down markiplier or, has like a let's play so if you want to do that it's fine you know yeah i would do one but i am way too boring to listen to like i i will not play a game while talking to myself so Anyone that joined the stream just heard silence yeah. for a long period of time. Oh, see, I talk to myself. Sometimes it's the only person that'll listen, so sometimes you just got to talk to yourself, Simeon. I'm sure I sound like a psychopath oh, you said my saying name. that. Were you talking to me? Oh. I wasn't listening. Uh, I was talking to, like, the idea of you, Simeon. <laughs> <laughs> much better than the actual thing, I guarantee. Oh, it's so true, so true. Ask his girlfriend. The idea of him is much more uh, enticing than the actual version of Simeon. Same with her. The idea of her is the only... Ooh, you would say it's the, oh, the only real thing that exists at some point. Is the idea of her? <laughs> yeah, it's almost like she's not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, let's, let's talk about Empire. Um, Simeon, we... You, you played a Seal of Empire, yeah? Kind of. So I, I never kind actually of. played a sealed where other people were using the boosters. Um, the first okay. empire that I played, um, I so I we were building to 400 points, and I just went and bought a brick and ruffled through all the boosters, pulled out like the best things that I could find, and I made a team. So it was kind of sealed for me. Again, that's not how you actually play sealed. It's not with 10 boosters. It's usually with two. But uh, maybe if you're Say like, isn't in, so. in Holland, then then you play with ten sealed boosters. But oh, absolutely! It's a lot of mulligans. It's a lot of mulligans. Uh, but no, so I, I kind of played sealed. Like I was limited to what I pulled. But granted, that limitation was like it was a pretty wide net that I cast when I played. Yeah, right. You you had plenty of stuff. Oh, quite yeah. quite a lot to choose from. Yeah. So. Out of that entire brick, I know you didn't play your chase, which is, I think, hilarious. Um, it's almost like it was not it's bad. The good ones, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's almost like Deadpool's trash or something. Yeah, I pulled Deadpool. Um, so the reason I didn't play the chase Deadpool is because I pulled the rare Deadpool. And I was like, I want to build a theme team. Uh, I've got too much stuff to try and, like build something out of all of this stuff you know i just opened what would a what is a brick 50 50 new figures i was like i need to limit myself in some way so i'm not sitting here for 20 minutes trying to build so i took that deadpool and i was like all right we'll look for assassins monsters and rulers and going through like the cards and stuff that i had i was like all right ruler seems like i can fill that out pretty easily so i slapped the Super Rare Ultron for 140, the non-prime on there. Um, the Super Rare Hulkling uh, at 60 points, also a ruler. Um, I did have sidelines for the uh, Kree and scrolls that he can generate, but I only, in both of my games, I only made one Kree soldier. Um, then I grabbed the Rare Colossus for 125 points. Not sure what he has to do with why he's a ruler if he's like you know i guess ruler of limbo is literally the uh 
flavor on his trait, but I guess that's just because he has the soul sword. And then last on my team was the common storm for 35 <laughs> points. She happened to be the only thing that could complete my 400 point team. Uh, but it gave me two energy explosions. It gave me some taxis, gave me a lot of like very interesting stuff that Colossus can carry two. Um, Ultron, of course, can carry one. Storm can carry one. Uh, Hulkling could carry one. If like you know, whoever wasn't already being carried could carry. It was a very, I don't know. I think out of like all the sealed, like thrown together teams, it was probably one of the ones that meshed the best, and it was just like very surprising and worked pretty decent. Okay, nice. I um, I I mean, I had to play against it. It was really good. Um, and like it went, it did well. And to be fair, it, were, it was a 400 Golden Age event, but no one was playing like broken Golden Age. In fact, I think I think I might have been the only person with the Golden Age figure on my team. Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I not agree. counting my Legacy card. I think no, I think they would have all been Silver Age. But still, like I think I was the only person with Silver Age personal characters on my team. Honestly. Right. I guess technically, um, yeah, the legacy card does bring that cap. Bring it, yeah. Out of gold. Modern. Sure. Yeah. So, no, that was a really fun event, though, in down in Omaha. That was really cool. Uh, the uh, giving away that brick of Fufo. Not Fufo. Yeah, not Fufo. Yeah. Fa, 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 fa. That was really cool. My insane luck of buying three boosters and getting more monetary value than Simeon's two entire brick is great just because I yeah. yeah two super airs and Venom Magneto is wild um uh sorry Simeon and then I got once again convinced my sister to play in that event and I just gave her 300 point Thor with some some filler dudes on the side and she had a ton of fun uh playing she she very well one of these days may actually play hero clicks by herself without me forcing her to play hero clicks I think she actually enjoys the game but then again I could just be wrong um, I'm being entertained, but yeah, uh, no, my team for that event, I, I was like really stoked to run this team because it was mostly Captain America. So it was the Green Lantern at 75 points to carry everybody up. It was Samantha Cap, uh, Cap Resi, title cap. It was the new Captain America, uh, with the, what's it called? Legacy card, which is cool. And then I had the Avengers Masters of Evil 50-point Captain America, which I've grown to really, really love. Uh, we had Lieutenant Gordon Malloy from the Orville. Quite an odd pick here. Um, and then the Atom to fill out 15 points uh, with Power Gem and the Venom Harness. Uh, Power Gem went on Earth X Cap, and then the Venom Harness went on the Ultimate's Rookie Cap. Uh, so... I guess Adam basically would be true golden because super but yeah Adam Wonder is Woman. true golden that's right yeah, yeah it's not part of the cot like the I did I did have one true golden figure on the team I really like I felt a little scummy playing a colossal retaliator but I didn't really retail with him much that day I really just needed someone with sidestep to equip my other object uh, since I didn't have anybody else with sidestep besides the mitt which is a little which is a real pain in the butt um, when you have a carry drop off type style team and adam isn't he's not like a man gog he he is good. he's good though he he's is good top five no no maybe? senses shape change reflexes and it's two pen yeah besides invincible right like that's still good and he can damage his own friendlies which balances him uh, quite a lot in my opinion yeah, he can also kill himself my team didn't careful. have any invincible which i don't know i don't know why, why? but uh why? Yeah, it's almost like it all came out of... Uh, it's where it's benched. Empire. Benched. Yeah. The, the benching continues. Yeah. It's, a, yeah, it was, it's a very basic drop-off team, but um, Green Lantern's 19 uh, defend with Gordon Malloy and that other Captain America giving plus one defense uh, to adjacent friendly characters means everybody should be rocking at least 20. You know, sometimes that didn't totally work out with where I wanted attacks to be made and how dropping off, like, had to work with placement and everything, which is a little tough. Um, but, you know, then you can drop off an ESD. A lot of the caps have ESD or have combat reflexes in their own right, which is really solid. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not the craziest team in the world, but it's a very simple drop-off team. I mean, pumping the 
ultimate's cap to be a 12 for 5 with the Venom Harness, close combat expert for his free attack is gnarly. Um, and then Venom Harness is not bad either, because it, it's a good way to activate him to go to his impervious click, his second click, which is really solid. Only bad thing about this team, and I think um, it would have won games more concretely, is if I would have had Outwit on this team. And obviously that was a choice. I could have played Green Lantern at 50 points instead and um, just used uh, Cap Resi's 18 defend, you know, and just been fine with that Walk type defense. Like a, a 21 from range and stuff. Right, yeah. Instead of, like, going for 22s from range and all that jazz. But, um, yeah, like, I thought it was fine. It, you know, probably, probably would have been better because, like, Simeon's team was absolutely killer. And if I could have, like, one-turned Ultron, that would have been really, really good. And there is no, like, penetrating damage for the caps. And, like, Sam obviously has, like, two damage and everything. So, yeah, if I could have, like, outweighed Ultron's defense, that would have been really solid. But even then, that Colossus is such a beast. I mean, where he gets to... Isn't he, like, five? Yeah, he's a ten for five on his last click with close combat experts. He's got a normal four damage. But, I mean, that's so wild. And doesn't he... Is that... What's that speed power? Is it flurry? No, it's his weird no, passenger two is, thing. Yeah, it's phasing. Yeah, it's phasing. But then when he moves, he can make an attack. So That's I right. can carry two people and like reposition, and then also make an attack Ooh. with him. So, or, yeah. or use the X Men team, team ability as free. <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, uh, no, it's. I mean, it's essentially like a full speed charge, uh, yeah. especially with like the powers he has on dial. So. Uh, he's really solid going against the yeah, Calder's team. Um, I knew I was going to have to take out the, what is it? The catcher's glove, the green catcher's glove construct oh, the mitt. before I yeah. even bother shooting. And top dial Ultron is a 12 attack. So I, you know, I have that. I have Colossus's prob. Um, I had Hulkling who had um, leadership mastermind. Ultron can free. The good thing, the one good thing about the normal Ultron is that he can free generate one of the drones, and then when he's damaged, he can free generate two if there aren't any on the turn on the map. Um, otherwise, it's a power action for either one. But that meant every turn I had Mastermind fodder for Hulkling. Uh, Deadpool, of course, can drop Jeff and do that whole thing. I think you took out Deadpool first, which is probably yeah. smart because. He can heal up past his starting line, and I was playing him at forty. Um, but yeah, it was it was a tough go, and then I definitely would have lost. Except uh, I we just pretended like I didn't when Ultron was on his stop click. We were just like, "How about he doesn't die though?" And yeah, just kept playing as if that was like you know real, and ended yep. up making a comeback because yeah, that was pretty funny. Ultron's drones. Um, so I don't know how many people. Uh, casually are paying attention, but Masters of Evil is no longer Colossal Stamina, even though HC Realms says it is. Uh, the actual team ability is pretty much PD for close. So for every adjacent, for every character with that team ability that is adjacent to an opposing character and a friendly character that's making an attack, you lower their defense by one if it's a close attack. So Ultron punching when there's, you know, two Ultron drones next to him and an opposing character, that opposing character gets minus two uh, and like the drones get like minus one when they attack. So their 10 for three actually ends up mattering. Um, Ultron's enhancement ends up mattering. Uh, but even then, you know, there was times where Colossus, Oh, and I forgot one of my favorite moments in that game was uh, uh, who was it that had the power gem? Was it, it was Captain America Resi. Okay. Oh, That's Cap, what I thought. Yeah. So I, I managed to take out Cap Resi, uh, used one of my Ultron drones to sidestep pick up the power gem, and then I ended up dropping it on the most unlikely of candidates for no particular reason. At the time, I thought I was just being kind of goofy, but I dropped it on the Kree soldier, who is normally an 11 for 2, and then <laughs> with the power gem... After he equipped it, became a twelve for four. Whenever he was, oh, making he was shots. terrifying. He was doing some damage against those uh, combat reflexes people, and yeah, uh, for twenty points, he was doing pretty well. Yeah, I was uh, a little shaking my boots. That Kree soldier. Oh man, I was like, okay, oh 
don't get me. He almost uh, finished yeah, the game, too, I think. He did, yeah, he did. Oh, dude, uh, was it near the end? Lieutenant Gordon Malloy made, like, four or five shape change rolls. Yeah, he was, it was rocking whack. on. He was surviving. Yeah, he wasn't going to go down easy. He, he was going to hold on to the bridge captain or, or whatever they might say in that show. I don't know. <laughs> Seth but he was hugging the donkey. That's what it was. He's hugging. Uh, he was really right. hugging the donkey. That's his again card. a reference I don't know, but that is his card. Yeah, yeah. The maneuver where they like fly. I. Uh, it's hard to describe. So in space, things move differently. So imagine like a stationary ship, and then a ship that's like strafing around it. So the the front of the ship is always pointing at the other ship, but it's like spinning in circles. It's like orbiting it. That's essentially <clears throat> what the hugging the donkey maneuver is. And it's, okay. I guess it's a incredibly maneuver. defensive. Yeah. I, I don't know why the other ship doesn't just like move or like slam into them or whatever, but you know, good for them for developing that height of technology. Uh, it's no, incredible. after seeing your team in action, I really want to give that Gordon Malloy another look because I like those high defense tank type teams where you've got like one taxi and then you've got a bunch of stuff that just has really high defenses or a bunch of rollouts or a bunch of like just cool stuff. Of course, Fantastic Four doing the 19 defend with the thing and then Ve- um, what was it? Agent Venom giving them all like shape change. That would oh, yeah, be, really that would be good too. Um, but yeah, that the 19 defend plus. Gordon Malloy boosting everyone next to him by one, and then the catcher's mitt boosting everyone again by two for range. It's pretty killer. It really is. Oh, yeah. That was, that was some good good stuff right there. Um, So I did play in Empire Sealed. I think I have my team figured out here. So we did Empire Sealed um, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for Fantastic Four... PK. We must have gotten Simeon. We must have gotten like four or five of these OP kits because he had an insane amount of product. I don't know what all is in an OP kit, honestly. I know the um, take home is like what a map, one of the random figures, and one of the random legacy or team up cards. Right. But I mean, we probably had 30, 40 team up cards or legacy team up, whatever, all of those. I mean, I walked away with like. And then we used our legacy cards we got from the bricks um, well for prizing. But like I walked away with like Wizard, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Thanos, um, Lockjaw, whatever. Like a decent amount of legacy cards. Just saw. We did a draft style prizing. I got top eight. I don't know where I got. I won two out of three games. Um, but they were pretty, so like one game was a wipe and then the other two were like a hundred to 150 points. I lost with a hundred and I won with 150. Um, and both my close, close games were against Ultron, but this set is really fun in sealed. I think it shows you how mediocre to bad your pulls can be and it can still be kind of legit. So my team was, and it did help, I had two probs and an outwit on this team, which I'm not going to pretend that that wasn't like the biggest thing in the world. Uh, Invisible one, so she was number one. Number two is Wiccan, uh, obviously another solid dude. Um, Madam Hydra for 45 points, I actually fielded her. Uh, Quicksilver, and I played Quicksilver at the full 60, just because I'm like seven clicks long is pretty decent. Um Plus, you're going and I also to, you need to either hit those dice rolls really well, or he's gonna get hit, and it'd be better to oh, yeah. survive one hit than yeah, sealed. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, he he tanked like two or three hits, and someone was like, "Geez, how many clicks does he have?" And he was on seven, of course. You know, when you finally ask, like, "Geez, how many clicks does this figure have?" You're like, "Oh no, it's he's on his last." Um. I had the 30-point Jean Grey, who, kind of funny how useful she ended up being. And then, ah, uh, tent pull, I guess, of the team was the 65-point Venom Iceman. Um, you know what? I, I was pretty hard on the X-Men, and I, I still hate the Venom X-Men. The can't be targeted is really good if you play it right within four squares in line of fire of an opposing character. Can't be targeted by ranged combat attacks, and... It really helped when they didn't have a lot of close heavy stuff. And there's a lot of range heavy stuff in this team. Like, 
one game I was going against Alex here, and he had like Rocket Raccoon, his own Wiccan, and then he had that super rare Ultron, right? And I had already taken out his um, Agent May. So after that, Venom Iceman was pretty much able to freely shoot and do whatever he wanted because with the barrier keeping people from getting close to him, I think Venom Iceman is the best with this trait. I don't know if anyone else is as nearly as good with this trait as possible, just for the fact that he does the barrier that you have to roll a breakaway from in order to uh, to do it. So you can put them, you know, in a spot where if they want to charge you or sidestep towards you, they have to roll a breakaway, which is great with that barrier. Um, but again, he's he's an 11 for 3 with in-cap knockback. Uh, and then he has that whole destroy a square blocking terrain. He deals one normal damage to people. I never used his special attack power. Never once. The only ba really bad thing about this team is Wiccan is my only um, flyer. Flyer slash, yeah, yeah, the only flyer in this entire team. So shuffling people around, I don't think Wiccan made a... He's obviously a better attacker than Iceman, technically. If he would have had running shot, he's a better attacker than Iceman. Because he's an 11 for 3, pen blast prob. But he didn't doesn't have a running shot, so I I don't think he made a single attack. I I honestly I don't think he made a single attack the entire day, um, which is funny. Invisible woman did just what we thought she was gonna do. Uh, she's insane with stacking up rally fours, and I just plopped her next to people, and just they could, she couldn't Never be targeted. Able to be targeted. <laughs> yeah, like that was pretty wild. There was a few turns where she didn't have it on there. Um, she was like, yeah, fine, you know, but. Uh, she rarely ever died. Wiccan was great, especially I had two X-Men on my team. Quicksilver doesn't have the X-Men team ability or keyword, but Wiccan did give plus one defense to Iceman and Jean Grey, which is really nice. Uh, Jean Grey's thing, and I think we made fun of it during the set review, uh, but it's free. Remove her rally die if you do this turn when she hits. After resolutions, deal each hit character one penetrating damage, which sounds really bad when she's a 10 for 2 mind control with no move and attack, no sidestep, no nothing. Uh, but I actually would mind control somebody who had Impervious and then dealt them one. Like, I mind controlled the Captain oh, Marvel so of the era Monica a few times. Yeah, to, like, plink him with some pen damage. I, it was quite odd how many... I got three or four off that night, which felt a little too good for... Um, well, I guess in, in uh, this year specifically... Um, it's a lot different than Rise and Fall where you're not having to choose all of the die for different characters. Like, the rally dies are actually different in this one. So, uh, Gene's like, what is it, a red five? Yeah. Um, that red five might actually be something where it's an option only for her, especially in Sealed. Yeah. It's, I mean, oh, it's definitely true. But, uh, it was, it was wild. They were they were close games. They were fun games. It was uh, it was hard. I'll tell you that right now. It was it was very difficult. This this team was like difficult. And I know uh, Kevin also pulled a team that was like you could do something with it. He at least got like Tachaka too. But honestly, when I pulled this, I was like I want to do a mulligan. And Lucas Tom Van Holland of all people told me I couldn't mulligan. So I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> okay, I see it. I see how it is. Lucas uh, buy a whole brick for sealed Tom Van Holland, his full legal name. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good enough for me, but not for thee, is what he's saying, Calder. It's a good thing Hopefully. he doesn't listen to this podcast on purpose. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. He would never. He would never, would never. Um, no, he, he said it, it is because... We didn't say we were going to allow mulligans at the beginning. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. That's, that that is fair. actually fair. Yeah. But I did have that moment where I'm like, Lucas told me I couldn't mulligan. Hmm. 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 <laughs> you know, and that was totally legit. You just, you know, that thought, you're like, really? Really? It's pretty funny. Uh, and thank you, Random Phoenix Nest member, who's going to tell Lucas that. He knows. I told him that night. You don't have to. You don't have to tell him right now, but you can if you want to. I won't stop you. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Empire's Empire's fun. Empire's a fun sealed set. I I really can't wait to build out of it uh, more than anything. Honestly, I uh, I like I like a lot of it that's in there. You know, I really 
Captain America is one of the biggest things I want to build out of it. I just want to play a triple Captain America team, but, you know, have, like, uh, Iggy Carter, whatever, and then a few other people that, like, make bystanders, and then just but swap them all out for other uh, Empire Captain Americas. I do have all three Empire Captain Americas I need for it. Um, and also, for anybody that wants to know, like, if you think this Captain America is so bad because he can't swap himself out, all you have to do is play two of him on the team, and then you can swap each other out. It says he can't be swapped out, like specifically him. Place it doesn't say anybody named Captain America. Characters. So yeah, yeah. If one activates, it would be able to replace the can, other one. Yeah, it's weird that swap being swap both at the same time. It's weird how swap and all this garbage activates, but can do it. So if you truly just want Avengers for swap mechanics and then don't want to play, and his forty point dial is not good. I won't pretend it's good. You know, it's no, it's rough. Not it's competitive. It's, it's a decent it's, 40 points, you know, it's, but it's not uncompetitive, you know. It's decent so. decent length, and, like, with the right stuff around it, it would be an okay 40 points, but, like, what are you what are you doing with it other than swapping? Because right. it's not like you don't really want it all the way up there to attack. I mean, it does have, for 40 points, it does have enhancement. I mean, I guess True. If, if you're hard up for enhancement. If, but, again, if you had, like, sidestep enhancement versus running shot enhancement be a lot, i mean it's not the worst but it could be a lot better honestly at 40 points i'd prefer you start with uh just like charge like stuff like empower and just charge and just not but he we'll say this i like that every point line feels like a rounded captain america i was starting with running shot going to charge uh, all that stuff like every point line feels like a really nice rounded yeah. Captain America dial, but yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, I didn't have time to film any of the games. We were trying to play as Fast and Furious uh, with the Fantastic Four uh, slop event, so I'll try to film ones in the future. We're talking about maybe doing like a 300 Silver Age for the next one, and that I would be really excited to do because I, I like Silver Age a lot. I don't know if I like 300 Silver Age, uh, but I don't know. I haven't played it yet, so I'm excited to try it out, of course. So, we'll see. I'll, I'll try to get some videos up of it if it, we don't like run so crazy like trying to go gotta go faster faster sonic x you know what i mean so hopefully i can get some in the future if not I'll try to do some more weekly some weekly gameplay coming up in the future with the fantastic four events which could be really cool but um but yeah that's been my experience so far with Fantastic Four, and I know a lot of people aren't getting the same thing. Oh, and if you've noticed, I didn't choose any of the, any of the actual figures from Fantastic Four. I only chose Legacy cards. Honestly, never saw myself playing any of them. But you know me; I don't like Fantastic Four, uh, and I didn't I haven't opened the map yet either. Um, I will say one thing, Simeon. Have you seen these the the maps? No. For uh, Empire so. and Fantastic Four, the the lines are thick. They have a really thick border. Like, there's a not basically normal Heroclix map, you know, it has basically just a very thin black line for the border, if it even has that, you know, for a border. Because um, sometimes it doesn't. There's like a, I don't know, quarter of an inch thick black border uh, on around the outside of every map. Might be more than that. Hmm. Honestly, it might be more Almost than like that. But it's a mistaken for walls kind of thing. It's, yeah, dude, like the borders, it's thicker than walls. It's thicker than a wall outline, honestly. It, it is crazy how like how thick it is it's ugh. it's gross honestly you know i never thought i'd say this some things in this world are too thick it's too thick dude it's it's nasty it's real nasty like yeah the, uh, the borders for elevated and for hindering are cartoonishly the at first for a while there i was like you know what maybe i can get behind the white dotted hindering green white dot speckled you know what i mean but yeah. dude it's it's bad not when it's not when it's that thick it's way it's the lines are way too thick thick um by whiskey it's it's crazy like the entire um i think one of the maps they remade was the avx latveria like central square latveria map which is not a map i missed from avx if they were going to make any avx map it should have been utopia west outdoor best map from AVX, in my opinion, amazing, great map. Um, but they they instead remade uh, the Latveria map, which is a very boring map. It's got some water, like it literally has four squares of water in the middle. 
and then it has uh, just a ton of blocking terrain for the buildings, and then it has like two like elevated decks on corners of the map. It's, it's a really weird map. Uh, it's not fun, and it's uh, it looks really goofy. It looks terribly goofy um, in this new style. I think I think the map style is a little too cartoonishly thick, cartoonishly thick, painfully thick. Uh, I really don't know how else to say it, guys. You, I, I might have to post a picture. There's there's pictures online, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It is, it is gross. It's gross how thick these maps are. But um, but yes, I I digress. That's um that's what I have noticed so far in these uh in these maps. But yeah. I have not played any of the Fantastic Four storyline stuff yet. Um. I'm pretty sure we're going to start it up here soon, if if maybe not already, because I have been missing occasionally just due to work or whatever. Um, I will say, so I haven't had a chance to play Koya yet. I didn't even pull one, but I did play against one, and I do think casually, I think those uh, Death Blossom Sprout markers, the Kotati Warriors and the Plant markers, definitely kick off a little bit quicker than I thought. Like it was, it was getting to like you know turn one, turn two. Uh, it was like three or four, and I was like, "Dang, I couldn't remember what all like was gonna like pop off." But I think he got to the um, the plus one attack and defense at one point, and I was making this was like with me making a point of trying to take out Koya. Like I was trying to take him out as quick as I could. And I was like, geez, if he gets to, like, six and regens, this is going to be really bad. Because in a few more, like, you know, it, if essentially with the length that the game took, which the game eventually was called because of time. Um, Calder knows why. But uh, the game was eventually yeah. called because of time. I think had I not gone, gone after Koi, Koya, whatever, uh, as quick as I did, I definitely would have been eating a ton of unavoidable damage for like the next couple turns. So I think casually that's a really solid piece, especially if you're doing like a 400 point where you can have a secondary equal threat. And, uh, you know, if you can keep pumping out the Kotati warriors, um, they in themselves make like a pretty decent little threat and like a wall that they can make. So, yeah, that was, uh, something that I was actually pretty impressed with. I knew it was a piece I wanted to play with, but like when I saw it in action, I was like, man, this is actually pretty legit. But that's, I think that's all that like I really, from the Empire set that I really wanted to build around. Cause honestly, like most of it, it's, it's pieces that I enjoy or pieces I find interesting for the most part, but nothing that I can really build around outside of what we've already talked about with. I guess like Hulkling maybe surprised me and like that's something I could at least at the 60 point line I could see myself building around the traded leadership mastermind has always been like a really solid combo and then he's also got cosmic energy and scrolls so like pretty decent options there and then um, I've already said both the Ultrons are things that I'd want to build with going forward as well so yeah I think it's a, a pretty decent set especially when you like when you're talking like in the casual setting I don't know how much is going to really stick around I still even though Venom Magneto's hitting like the 250 200ish range all over the place I still don't think that anyone needs two of them I still think that like anyone who does that is I mean sure it might work for a little while I guess I'll give you that if you've seen it in action you know more than me but uh, I think Some people that, uh, want five of them, Simeon. <laughs> sure, I just this is it's things like Venom Magneto having two of them on a team that kind of make me wish uh, Vulture with the Auk arms was back to just eat right through those with almost no effort. Yeah, I mean, it is annoying, and honestly, because he has that same Venom trait, it's like I. It's good. It it shocked me how good it is. Now, I think it's probably only good when they do funky stuff, like what Venom uh, Iceman does, his kind of like funky barrier. Then I would say uh, Magneto's, you know, very free TK type funky stuff. 
also help him with that venom trait, but also just super senses is very solid. Yeah. Just plasticity, um, so, super senses is yeah, pretty. Decent. Is also just fine. I mean, so. he is for thirty-five points. He is just a sixteen toughness for close, um, and he's not yeah. protected out with so. He is only targeted by ranged combat attacks, so that was one one of my opponents like, ah, oh, shoot, I can't even prob it. I'm like, no, you can prob it. I just can't be targeted by ranged combat. It's not like I can't be targeted. It's targeted by ranged combat attacks is all it is. So you can still be outwitted and probed and all that jazz. Um, it's not this crazy end-all, be-all. It's in some ways better than, not better than stealth. It's kind of a give and take, you know, because there's no hindering terrain needed for it. But It would definitely be outpaced if... Uh... WWE Wave 2 was ever released because we all know Grand oh, so true. is one of the best abilities in the game. And uh, so is what I, I can't remember what it's called Grand Entrance and man, what's the, the protection from range one called? That's just the WWE team ability. Oh, that's just part of the WWE team ability. It's like a name for it. Under, I mean, there's bounce and pin, now. but that's not that's not that. No, that's. I think that's for WWE Universe games only. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. No, oh, okay. there's uh, bounce and pin in non WWE. That's how you use ropes. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. Maybe. All I'm saying is if they release Wave 2, this Venom Magnetus price drops because there's going to be a Ric Flair that's like 20 points. Oh, yeah. And uh, even though we didn't see him anywhere, Ric Flair, who's not like scheduled for Wave 2, 20 points, and it's going to have a 14 speed. Uh, grand entrance and be able to take this venom magneto out in one shot so yeah clearly <laughs> clearly it's not a pipe dream at all it's not uh it's not just me being really sad about something optimistic being, painfully can't, optimistic canceled but yeah uh all right well simeon i think we've beat the dead horse on empire and fantastic four enough i want to just get into uh get into some questions yeah, but you forgot we had questions. I forgot I, we had I questions. Did, yeah. Um, so I feel a little bad, but I was like, you know, I bet we have. You know, I was like, it was getting near to the end of the show or whatever, near the end of this discussion. I was like, you no, know, we didn't do any like listener questions. Um, it's you know like not too bad. It's just. I think we have questions to get to. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we got Facebook questions. I mean, some Discord questions. Uh, don't have any emails. Don't have any uh, what's it called. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Alex asks, do you ever just build a team and stare at it? Proud of your creation. <laughs> I love this question. It's hilarious. Yeah, I do. I've... I built a team like this. This Captain America team I just talked about with the high defenses, drop off, free attacks team. I'm like, I love it. Yeah, I love it all. I've definitely yeah. like worked and tweaked on teams to the point where I was like, I don't get much better than this. <laughs> like you know, slapping the the hood of my team and uh, being like, man, this thing's gonna go far. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've also made like some casual teams where I'm just like. Ah, uh, the goofiness exceeds what like I previously thought I could reach, and that like makes me happy when I manage to do that. So yeah, yeah, that definitely does happen. Uh, not as often as I'd like because a lot of times when I'm building casually, I just throw something together as quick as possible because I'm on like a time crunch. But uh, yeah, when I, when there's like an event coming up, I definitely will like sit back and hem and haw and build it slowly. Yeah, I. I can't see a team that I've taken like 300 modern events. I've ever been like, wow, look at what I made. I'm normally just like, Ugh, will this even work? Like the entire time, I'm just like, Ugh. you know, even teams that I've like won with, you know, my state winning teams, my like some handful of WKOs and stuff, like the Master Mold team. I was like, yeah, it's good, but like, I don't know if I love it, you know, like they're like, 300 modern event teams. Don't normally make me be like, ah, yes, I've crafted such a beauty, or I've someone's helped me craft such a beauty, I and truly hero clicks code. Right. I can no. see their in, program. In sealed, in sealed, I've been like, whoa, look what I was able to make, and still not win. But I was like, wow, that's kind of good, you know? Yeah. I'm I like, feel this like is almost a constructed team. In, in sealed, the more confident I am after building, the less well I do. 
because it's like been it's always been the times where I'm like, oh, like here we go. We'll see how well this pile of trash goes that I'm like pleasantly surprised and do pretty well. But whenever I'm like, yeah, I've got an outwit, two perplexes, a prob. I've got this like high stats here. I've got all this stuff like for Wonder Woman when I did the Eagles uh, sealed uh, pre-release. I think it was. Um, I had the Wonder Woman super rare that has like the 19 defense, two Harley Quinns, a Cersei. So I had three probs, 19 defense, and then I had Star Sapphire who not only has TK but also can succeed on leadership and give a plus one to everyone on my team for defense. And so I was like, man, how do I lose? And then my opponents just kept hitting me with like crit hits and stuff. I got That's how I you played lose. against PJ, and I was literally like, "Oh, what do we have here? A crit hit?" Oh. And then the next roll was a crit hit. A, a classic Phoenix Nest like, loaded dice. Ah. I understand? <laughs> yeah, that roll twenty. Yeah, that roll twenty though. Um, you know, it's funny. Like on like the opposite end of that, uh, it was it was another SEAL team. It was for Rock Cup, but it, it was I had Detroit Steel first attack I was going to make. Oh, your second attack I was going to make all game to finish off. Black Canary or somebody. He had a 15 defense combat reflexes. Detroit Steel has a 10 attack top dial. And he's 150 points. Yes, I know. It's painful. Um, I, and I go, and I'm playing against Howard, or Brock, and I just go like, you know, it's 10 out of 15, so it's probably going to be a crit miss, because I don't have any prob. And you know what I rolled, Simeon? A crit miss. Rolled a crit miss. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yup. <laughs> yup. They don't think it'd be like that sometimes, but it do. It really scooby dooby do. So, yeah, I can't was... say I was enthused. I think I can't remember when when in like the bracket order I played him, but I think I said that right after I had explained. No, I think it was my game after that I was explaining how I had called PJ crit hitting one of my like Harleys to like KO her instantly, and uh, then I immediately did it again. And I was like, I need to stop telling. <laughs> like maybe. Maybe roll twenty is listening to my microphone and altering the rolls on my command or something because Could be. it was very strange that it happened like back to back, game to game. But yeah, um, that was a team. <laughs> getting back on track, that was a team that was from a sealed, and I was like more than confident in it, and I did not end up doing very well because you know dice just be like that sometimes. Uh, but on the other hand, I think there's been multiple times where I've pulled pretty bad, pretty like under par, or at least I believe it's under par kind of stuff, and then I end up doing pretty decent with it. Yeah, I've definitely had those underdog sealed moments. See what you mean. Um, next up, I'm gonna save Chance's question for later because we really didn't think on it feel bad because it is a question that would require kind of quite a bit of thought um before we get into it because it's it's a pretty loaded question Uh, but alex has another question um which is not really here who's related uh but it's who would make a better green lantern uh goku from dragon ball z or simon from gurren lagan uh both of their primary superpowers is sheer willpower um i don't know about goku uh seems like a loser but i do know simon um, and although I don't like Simone, uh, because he is annoying compared to Kamina, and I think Kamina makes a better Guy Gardner-esque Green Lantern, where it's a mix of willpower and sheer, I'm not going to say stupidity, but uh, blindness to consequences of your actions to just go for it. I know he would make an excellent Green Lantern, but of course, uh, the entire point of Gurren Lagann is that the core drill, the mecha, works off of willpower. So, I mean, I think Simone's got to take it. But that's, of course, being someone who's never watched an episode of Dragon Ball Z in their entire life and would personally love to keep it that way. Nice. Hey, I'll just uh, I'll just say I think Goku's died more times than Simone. So, um, it's I mean, I, I think between the two, that mean, means that Goku has less willpower. If he just keeps dying, you know... A lot of pushing damage. Yeah. That would have been relevant a year ago. Ha ha. Here we are. <laughs> are there, yeah. Simeon, there might be some people listening to this podcast. Be like, what is pushing damage? That's true. Going forward, yeah. that is a true concern Wild. that I, I have to have is uh, people saying, well, 
You know what? what? Unavoidable damage. I've only seen that in reference once. That's a good thing. That's actually a good thing, because we want new people to join the game. But it's just wild to think about that it's been enough time to where it's like, you know what? A new person could have definitely picked up this game in a year since that change, and they would have no clue at all about any of this. Yeah. It's just whack. To add to my answer, I'm going to say that Saitama from One Punch Man can beat Oh yeah. Because he beats everything with one punch, and I know Correct. how angry that makes people that really like Goku. That's so, but that's uh, just true. I mean, he could beat Superman as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He no. it's literally his superpowers could be, beating. Could be Omni Man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's like yeah, your your character is cool and powerful. It's, it's one punch. It's one yeah. punch. And as far as we know, Saitama has never been beaten, and uh, like I said, Goku's died multiple times. Uh, so, yeah, big loser takes many L's. This Goku kid. <laughs> I just know that there's, the kids there's at least one person out there that's just like raging. They like, fuming like, right now, and, I, and their name is I'll Edward Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> had I had um, cable growing up, I probably would have been super into Goku. But I only yeah. ever saw Dragon Ball Z like once or twice at my friend's house, and I do not watch shows that have more episodes than days in the year. So there's like no way that I'm gonna catch That's up. That's fair. You know, like fair. I will not watch One Piece. I will not watch Bleach. I won't start any of those series because I straight up cannot get into a show that's got that many episodes. Uh, like, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm a bad nerd, but um, yeah, I'm sure everything that you think about Goku is correct, and I am completely wrong. So please don't message me about it. Oh, I think our our fairly unbiased opinions clearly are, are definitely what we should go off of. Uh, yikes. No. I mean, uh, didn't I'll, even we'll have put the willpower close. to keep a monkey tail. Like, geez. See, That's you like know more than me. I, I quite literally have no idea what half of this means right now. And, uh, yeah. didn't even have I, I, I own Dragon Ball Z, the movie. fighting game for PS4, so I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, anyways... Uh, Malcolm Rush sends us some questions about nicknames on Facebook, and these are actually Hero Who's related. Um, he says to help players know which piece they're talking about, they use quite a few nicknames. Some nicknames are based on sculpts, uh, others their powers and abilities. Best, worst, favorite nicknames. These are all best, worst, favorite. I think we'll just kind of spout out some some famous nicknames for Hero Clicks. So this is purely based on their sculpt. I would say um, the best nickname. I don't know if this, I don't know if this is necessarily the best based on their sculpt, but Smoky Foot Cap, he's probably got the best mm. sculpt that I can think of with a nickname. Yeah. Um. Now, I'm not. I, he can probably be my favorite too. Now, worst, uh, probably because it's it's maybe slightly inappropriate, but uh, Balls of Fury, Nick Fury, because he because sure. they're eyeballs, eyeballs. But yeah. but clearly, people thinking of of some other type of yeah. Well, the uh, balls. What was I'm pretty sure that's the name of... It's like a movie, right? Will Ferrell film. A ping-pong movie? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm weird. Maybe I'm thinking of Blades? Yes. It's a glory? The ping-pong one with uh, Willem Dafoe. No, gosh. Christopher Walken. Sorry. They're (laughs) big, old, wrinkly guys. I have a hard time. Um, (laughs) Willem Dafoe. (laughs) He would have made a good uh, ping-pong master, too. I bet so. No, yeah, that's that's definitely a good one. Uh, man, I think a lot of times it usually just gets shortened to, like, their actual name. So if it's like, you know, if you're talking about the Hawkeye from ADW, you just say Hawkeye. And most people know you're not going to competitively play any of them but that one, especially when you're yeah. still an option. Um guess like the current one that i can think of is dj doom just because DJ like, doom. that's yeah, yeah entirely sculpt based uh it really only matters if the character has multiple versions and you really have to like is there is there one for a thor out there is there one for I mean, I, this new Thor is called like Super Saiyan Thor, is it not? To bring yeah, it like full okay, circle. That's what, yeah, a couple people uh, have been calling it Super Saiyan Thor. Um, yeah. It's obviously, you know, just Harold Slow Thor, the but same thing. Harold sure. Thor, yeah. Um, what was the the Odin Odin the Destroyer? The, there was definitely one for that. Was there a nickname for him? 
I mean, it the big was, metal it wasn't, destroyer suit, Odin. It wasn't used enough to really be like a big presence, but I think it might have just been like a local thing. Somebody called it like Destroyden <laughs> or something. Oh, uh, Destroyden, that's a good one. It's uh, funny. All the the Wolverine and Cyclops were shortened to like Headmaster Wolverine, Headmaster Cyclops. Um, yeah. Or like alternatively, well, that like one that would be our things. second question, right? Not based on sculpts. Oh, okay. uh, that would be based on their powers. Would be right. So the second question is uh, best versus favorite nicknames for a figure based on their powers. So now powers and abilities. So definitely like Headmaster Wolvie, Head Headmaster Cyclops. Um, anyone, any title character is just called title blank, title right. cap, title Harley, um, stuff like that. Where purely because they're the title version of the character. I I think most nicknames come from sculpts and not from whatever, you know, from abilities. I honestly trying to like rack my head. It's more like like certain ones. Opinion, it's like it's, sculpts and rarities it's seem more to likely be likely you'll n- like nickname a certain build after like abilities er. and characters after sculpts. Because like yeah, so. your, your build is like based off of like a like we do this kind of thing. Right, your build could be an alpha is, strike. Right. But like yeah, if I'm talking about like Legion, I would differentiate the two by you know title Legion or regular Legion, and that's again right. same with like primes. I always I know other people have had different nicknames for certain primes and stuff. Um, day, like the Danger Room, Sabretooth, Magneto. Obviously, you just say danger room and then whatever um, to differentiate them. And then, like, I always just say prime this or prime that or, like, non-prime, you know, uh, non-prime gladiator instead of emperor gladiator. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, emp glad or something. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, like, look through some sets here, but I'm not popping a ton of them into my brain for, like, ability-wise. Um, number three here is best versus favorite nicknames for hero click sets. I I can't imagine there's many nicknames for hero click sets at all. Uh, if you want to take about, like, shortened ones, I think, like, the one of the funniest shortened ones is, sadly, whatever HC Realms kind of puts it as is what it ends up being. But I really liked when X-Men the Animated Series was Xmas. Um, yeah. not XDPS. I preferred I preferred Xmas uh, to XDPS. Sadly, um, so that was a, a nickname for a set. Uh, I liked Superman Legion of Superheroes. It's my least favorite set of all time, probably. But Slosh is very funny yeah. uh, to me as like, a. Uh, um, the Fast Forces for Future Foundation is FF FFFF. FFFF. That's right. funny. Good job, um, HC Realms. Yes, I will take that back on HC Realms because I always put Earth X as EX, not EAX, and I always do SWBW for Secret Worlds Battle World. So there, there are a few ones on HC Realms that like no people actually use, but I feel like for the most part, it probably is like something undead. Yeah. I don't think anyone Rip. calls undead U N D like that. They have it. It's yeah. definitely R I P is what they use it for. Um, ADW, I don't know why I like ADW, Avengers Defenders War, but ADW just rolls off the tongue for some reason. Uh, I like it. Uh, yeah, ADW. Something about it. Like That's one of my favorite acronyms for a set. For whatever reason, it's uh, I'm pretty solid. Sure or people, Avast. I think I like Avast say as well. Before for Wolverine and the X-Men. Really? Wax them? Dude, we're going to wax them. Like a wax freaking them. candle, we're going to wax them. I love that. Um... Yeah, I like Avas, uh, Nefas, uh, Nick Fury, Agents of Shield, N A O N F A O S, Nefas, uh, Gotga, G O T G, um, for for Guardians of the Galaxy. I my, my phone auto corrects a lot of stuff to G O T G, uh, for whatever reason nowadays. Dof, Days of Future Past is funny. Um, there's some good one. Uh, A V X classic. Can't beat A V X for a for a good set acronym. Um, but yeah, I think those are really, I can't think of any sets that I have a nickname for, you know, on a set that wasn't based on shortening its name to like letters or whatever is, um, I think the, it's a DC set. 
Oh yeah, Teen Titans I call trash. Oh yeah, that it's makes just sense. Absolute trash set. Can't believe I had to play it twice in a row. Uh, question number four here is: You could give a Heroclix piece or a set a new nickname. What would it be, and why? Um, it's a little tough, especially when you don't like think about it too much. Um, I don't know. I like so Sky Tyrant. Uh, I think a lot of people call him Sky Guy. I think that's a great nickname. The only bad thing is that's what I call my team or the team that I played when I had Sky Tyrant and Guy Gardner all on it. I called it the Sky Guy team. Right. But just Sky Tyrant can be called Sky Guy too, which is a classic throwback to a... I guess you shouldn't say throwback. It's not that old. Like Anakin Skywalker, the Clone Wars animated series is great. Um, we could nickname WWE Wave 2 um, uh, Hopes and Dreams That Will Never Be Accomplished or something. I don't know. Twinkle in your eye, the sparkle that fades. Um, we can rename Rebirth to Trash, except for five figures. Oh, wait, let's see. Duke Thomas. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. Empire, you can call something like uh, Always Sunny, because the, the gang's back together. Yeah, hey, that's pretty good. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The gang is back together. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, you could also call Elseworlds and What If trash as well those sets can be <laughs> renamed to garbage um and for some reason i don't know why but many people say elseworlds is better than what if when what if definitely had more like good figures to pull from i don't I, know why i'll say elseworlds chase theme was cooler oh it's way what better if's. definitely um but what if had more figures that i could play like i yeah. liked peter the hunter Cosmic Spider-Man was, eh, like, you could play Cosmic Spider-Man. Goblin King, of course, was, like, what everyone actually wanted to pull. Um, Peace Machine got a lot of play. Did, um, yeah, I forgot about Peace Machine. Yeah, like, I mean, they just had, a, it had a lot, and I, I'm i only listing off super errors. Gertrude York's and old, old Lace made it on a bunch of my teams. Honestly, all the Runaways made it on some of my teams. Um, on the other hand, from Elseworlds, I think I've maybe played... Like the Clockwork Man and all like the the past people from that one, but that's probably it. I don't think I ever played. Uh, I guess I'll, I did play the Planetary Team at one point, but there's a lot of stuff that I didn't play in there. Uh now that I'm looking at it, it's about even. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, it maybe it's mostly, more than I thought. <laughs> It was like REV Revisited, and for anyone that's new enough to the game that doesn't know, um, Heroclix rarities used to come in three flavors, Rookie, Experienced, and Veteran, and it would be three of the same sculpts but slightly different dials. Um, this was essentially uh, the 15th anniversary was like revisiting that, and so the sculpts were all the same but slightly different dials and cards and traits and stuff. Uh, pretty, pretty bad, like... It was not fun pulling a rare, a common, and an uncommon that all had the same sculpt. Oh, right. Ugh. Yeah. Especially, like, Daredevil with his wonky, pain, Billy Club sculpt. The the Machete Punisher is egregiously disgusting sculpt, <laughs> and I hate it. Um, Spider-Man sculpt is bad, too. Yeah, they were not, they were not good. They were not great. Um... Yeah, I can't really think of any crazy other, like, nicknames for, like, figures that I really, really want. The Captain America set um, labels on one of the side for the sub-themes. It says Great Lakes Avengers as the, as the sub-theme in the first Captain America set, which needs to be relabeled as a blatant lie because there's three Great Lakes Avengers in that entire set. To be fair, uh, most that have ever been in a set ever, but uh, th- I don't think three whole characters... Uh, gives you the right to call it like a sub theme, and that needs to be addressed. I think if they're gonna do a dedicated sub theme where they actually are like putting it on the box, you should be able to total the points and make a three hundred and four hundred point team. Now, if that yeah. like if that means they get the frightful four treatment where everyone's like seventy five points, and then there's like one twenty five point figure or something, that's fine, I guess, but. I, well, I, I mean, the, um, even, the Fantastic Four had the same amount of people in that yeah. set. Um, and that wasn't 
a Fantastic Four sub theme, but it was a Great Lakes Avengers sub theme, and you know, yeah, it's yikes. It was bad. It's really bad. Um, we could call Green Lantern movie set the only movie set with Ryan, the only superhero movie set with Ryan Reynolds in it to be clicks. <laughs> just just as a stark contrast, uh, contrast to like movies he's made and what we actually have. Although. Zero zero one Green Lantern here has a nine attack two damage charge, but he's got uh, what's that? Ooh, close combat expert. Whoa, he's really been buffed by the new rules uh, in the Green Lantern gravity feed here. Incredible. That is is that our main that's Green Lantern? That's a pretty good face. Yeah, dude. That's a a yikes for me. Actually, is it Tomari? Actually, really like the Tomari in the set. Eighty points. He's a uh, actually. Quite got quite upgraded here in the Tomari. He was a Silver Age figure uh, one time. He's 10 range, running shot, uh, 10 attack, 3 damage. He's got a uh, range combat expert, which is really good. Um, also, you add one for, to your role to determine the first player for each friendly character with the Green Lantern core keyword. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, so that's like different for like if it's a scientist theme team or whatever, which is also cool. So I don't know if that works anymore with his role for first player, but he's still a 10 range barrier, 10 range. You know, Dang. Ten, 10 speed running shot Damn with it here with 11 for four. A absolute trash dial for 200 points. Oh, dude. You just legacy card it like the Thanos we got. He already has Quintessence, who's so already better than that Thanos, dude. You just legacy card it to have some stupid construct trait that says roll a d6. Have the result and choose a number of constructs equal to the result. <laughs> the whatever. And then just give him a bunch of busted stuff. He already has better stats for 200 points than that Thanos. He's got Impervious, which just already makes him better, you know? I feel like it's, we could legacy card him to be good. There's a lot of stuff in this. Well, not a lot, but there's There's 10 figures. Let's figure. not say there's a lot of stuff well, in this. I, I was just set, saying please. several figures that I don't remember at all being in the movie. Right? I was like, where was Boudica and, like, yeah, whatever... Avin Sir, oh no, and Avin Sir was the, never mind. Uh, he was definitely in the movie. Uh, or Rami Hall. The butterfly. What is that thing? Weird butterfly Green Lantern. Yeah. Uh, man, this makes me excited for the HBO Max series Green Lantern show coming soon to a HBO subscription near you. Dang, why is Sinestro so much better than Hal Jordan slash Green Lantern? I mean, I get it. He's learning the most of the movie, but dang, Sinestro like slaps. I mean, Ed's he doesn't slap for 135 points. No. But. He is quite a bit better dial, but... Uh... The nine clicks, though. That running shot blades, though, ESD, though. It's pretty legit. It's pretty legit. Yeah. Um, we got off on quite the looky-loo uh, at the Green Lantern set, and that's because it's so magnifyingly beautiful. Um, Malcolm asks, what nicknames do you want? people to call you by uh i've i've recently began to rebrand myself as as the rowdy ranch man or the sexy right. ranch man after your um, accident uh lost both of his ranch hands lost both, so both my ranch hands are right. are gone we so we're gonna bring it's, it up because it's still a touchy subject for calder but it is well especially since no i can't touch so thanks hand. a lot yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been really difficult um but yeah but yeah, the rowdy ranch man or sexy ranch man from now on, please. Um, it's just really, it's a, it was a real Evil Dead 2 times 2 situation over here. <laughs> uh, and it's not good. Dead Dimian, I infected both hands. And I, they took both my hands. Lieutenant Dan, no wait, that's legs. Who is it from Tropic Thunder? That was theirs though. Anyways, Simeon, you, you got a few nicknames. Um, Troll is one of them. That's a very popular <laughs> nickname people call you by. Uh, uh, the Dial H for Hero Clicks Champion, the Billy and Clicks Bruce. Um, what's, a, what's a nickname I, you really like? Ooh, uh, I, I once got called the Edgy Calder, and I was like, oh, ooh. man, you're giving me so much credit. Thank you uh, for being anything like the, Calder or Edgy. Is that uh, the only difference between I the guess. two of us? Is that yeah, you're the Edgy? <laughs> you're edgier? Yeah, in a room, yeah. Uh, I am just you can't tell. And other you than can't that, tell. yeah, we we play the same teams. We talk the same. We're, uh, you know, just the only We're identical. Is I, I'm willing to go the distance and post crazy stuff online. Like yeah. I don't know, calling people out on things that they should be called out on. How edgy of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I 
I've always just used my last name as my nickname, which is awkward sometimes when people realize that that's not my actual name and it's my last name. And then they, they're like, your name's Bruce Bruce. And I'm like, no, it's my last name, just my last name. But, um, I guess if, if they really wanted to give me a nickname, something like, uh, you know, sometimes I shine. So I want something like, um, kind of like represents that, but I'm also, you know, like down to earth. So something like, Raw hide. Sterling. Oh my gosh! Ah, <laughs> uh, what? Of... <laughs> what? Get Actually, out of here! You know what? I, I've guy. been thinking about going by Caballo Diablo from now. on. Uh, shut up! Shut up! <laughs> because bring you know, it at the, the end Caballo of the day, I'm just, I'm just half horse, half devil. <laughs> <laughs> Why hey. is the rin, the wind <laughs> Roman free? <laughs> you psychoanalyzed that song so yeah. hard, dude. You're bothering me so much. <laughs> it's a good song. It really Leave is. Chris Ledoux alone. I listened to uh-huh. it quite a bit. Someone told me that uh, that song about uh, uh, it's the ropes mud. It's the the, the the roar of the Sunday crowd. Uh, oh. The rodeo. Someone told me boots that and spurs. Bad. It's camel. Yeah, roar of the sun and the crowd. Yeah, I don't know Ledoux. if I believe that. Ledoux. Ledoux. I'm in the buckle. Shame oh. on the on the calving rodeo. Yeah. Oh, great song. He must be Canadian. It what? Ledoux. 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 It's French. It's French. There's plenty of French people who live in America. And the close-minded. Uh, true. Arguably more French people that live in Canada. Because um, we don't have a part of America we call French America. So, uh, And then Malcolm's last question is, what nicknames do you hate people uh, when they call you that nickname? Nice try, Malcolm. As if I'm going to say that on air. <laughs> I, way, to, way to try to pull the wool over my eyes here, yeah, buddy. I honestly do not care. As long as I know that they're talking to me... Um, then yeah, I, I I don't think I have garnered enough uh, fame amongst hero clicksers to have a real yeah. nickname or anything like that. Um, I've definitely heard Calder referred to as like the cowboy hat guy. Sure, especially like if you're at like a no, tournament I can't say I like I can't oh, say like I hate that one guy over there. Yeah, there's another more like, like a, yeah, I, I do no wear a cowboy hat about, like anyone that's here kind of thing but right well they'll never see me at the top table but you will see me in the background of pictures wearing a cowboy <laughs> hat that is one thing you will see easy to spot um, unlike yeah. me a shadow that stalks in the night okay simeon simeon okay i'm not gonna you know shadow at night like hellboy 2 i quote hate quotes here vibes you're just trying to i'm a little too edgy you're really being super edgy Calder right yeah, now, Simeon. It's, it's like a bit Calder, much. Except edgy, that's for sure. Yeah, that's my go-to that's gimmick, all you are. What can I say? It's, uh, I don't bring a lot to the table other than all that edge. All the edge. And then my, you know, Roman mythology. Mars. There it is. I was waiting for the, I was waiting for the reference. Good. Roman mythology, some edge, some Mars cliff, some Mars blade. I think is what we, that's another one you used. <laughs> Uh, I think that is all that I have on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord for questions. No emails. Um, I will, however, I'll pop in a little Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. That's right. I remembered to do it this week. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, tip of the week, if you charge a single figure and they have shape change and they succeed, the action resolves without an attack because there isn't another target available. No takebacks, no rewinds. Sucks to suck. Uh, I had this, I, I thought it was crazy that someone who's across the pond had a tip like this because Jedi Legend, obviously, not from America here. Um, that is exactly what happened. Um, 
this last Friday when I played Heroclix, I a few of the kids, we have uh, some younger people that play Heroclix, which is great. You love that. You love it when young people get into the game because it's honestly super lame and boring if it's all like 30-year-old dudes. No offense to the majority of Heroclix players slash majority of scenes, but it's good to have some young blood in there, um, some diversity and everything, even if they are a bunch of little Zoomers um, that say memes and stuff that you start to feel really old for not understanding. Um, it's still good, but yeah, we had a few of them being like, wait, so like I charged this figure, he got scroll shape change or whatever, and he's like, that really sucks that you can't like make an attack or just like you know, take the action back because that was such like a waste. And I'm like, yep, yeah, that's how the power works. It does suck. Thank you for uh, reconfirming to me that I have wasted a, an entire action here to do nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll give him a glimpse of how um, his options when he gets out of high school will be. Oh gosh, those two will suck by the time that they get there. Oof. Oof. Jeez, Simeon. Yeah, bring all that edge. That was a really bad air horn effect. I oh. <laughs> we, post. It really, what? yeah. You'll add a real air horn effect, I'm sure. I'm sure we just actually heard a really good air horn effect and not just burr, 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 weird Simeon yeah, noise and or the noise I just made. Hopefully it wasn't real. Air horn. <laughs> yeah. Burr, hey, Simeon. Burr. You know what's the only piece of Hero Hooks news we have is that Scott Porter is going to unbox stuff tomorrow. Yeah. And by tomorrow, when you're Probably listening to this podcast. So this listening. podcast, you're sadly going to listen to this podcast throughout the week. Scott Porter is unboxing. And we will, of course, not be talking about any of that. We'll talk about it next week. Sorry, guys. I wish we saw all of his stuff right now so we could tell you about it. But, um, that's not how these unboxings work. But what do you think? Isn't this kind of soon? Like I know his last unboxing was technically November, but that's, that's still really soon. Pretty close. So if they're back on track to how they normally do stuff, the Scott Porter unboxings usually were done. Like this is like under normal circumstances. Usually they were done two weeks before pre-release or a week before pre-release, like right around that area. Um, now, granted, like that's completely out the window because of the global shipping kind of issues, but uh, no, it, it is very soon to a set that has only just like hit a few locations. There's a few locations around uh, America, at least, that just now are getting Empire or still haven't quite gotten Empire. So it is going to be pretty relatively recent. Uh, we'll see if it actually sticks the landing and gets, you know, sent out around like the end of January or maybe the beginning of February. Um, at this point, like at this rate, I would put it on the table, but not like not uh, expect it because uh, who knows? They could just be showing off product. You know, they kind of showed off Empire fairly early um, as far as like when it actually ended up getting released. And then they did not show off the Eternals movie at all before it was released. So, true. Yeah, you know, anything's really possible. It could we could see all of this set and wait three months for it, or we could see it all and it could be hitting pre-releases in two weeks or so. I more so than anything, I just want this set to come out. That way, we are less time away from Disney Plus. Sure. Uh, honestly, uh, that's really where I'm at with sets right now. I think. Uh, I don't know your thoughts on Empire. So far, there's only one figure I need in it, and of course, we've only seen like four or five figures in this, but that is, I think, the Chase Crusader. It's because she has a Captain America shield and is apparently Captain America's daughter from some random what if. Right. So, like, I need her. But besides that, I honestly did not need to buy as much Empire as I did. As I did. So I think I'm going to try to cut back in order to justify how much disney plus i'm gonna buy with the price increase um you think at the price increase for disney plus or any of the stuff for disney plus being close to war of the realms and honestly War of the realms being so far we know nothing about it i'm i in my mind i'm like this is gonna be a lame set i'm not gonna buy any of it but we don't know if it's gonna be a lame set or not I'm, it could be a really really cool set yeah i'm so, actually extremely excited because they did so well with wonder woman 80th I'm hoping that this is a similar, like, Asgardian kind of thing. Instead of, like, Amazon, it's like, you know, 
a bunch of generics. Like if they knock it out of the park, give us seven, eight generics. You know, Thor's got plenty of little enemies running around that are, you know, you could have dark elves, you could have stone men of Saturn, you could have rock trolls, ice trolls, um, all kinds of just like junk characters. Make them all sidekicks, have some sort of commander that spawns them, have some captains, do like some simple cool stuff like that for the common section. And then if they really knock it out of the park with like the rares and super rares, I might actually be interested in this set. As it is, I'll probably just keep grabbing those really cool characters from Mighty Thor because I still have them all. Yeah. Yes, you know, I forgot to like mention this, but if, if it is basically a redo of Mighty Thor, um, for the most part, I would be okay with that. Mighty Thor was a really good representation of Thor as a hero click set. And it was had some like super legit figures. Um, but I would honestly, I just want a Wrecking Crew. It's been five yeah. years, almost five years since Mighty Thor came out. So we're definitely overdue for a Thor specific set, um, I think. So getting a new Wrecking Crew would be really awesome. However, I don't think there's any objects in this set. And the, um, whatever, the crowbar and the Wrecking Ball were pretty awesome objects. So it's probably just a good idea they don't have those to like try to live up to. And so they can what just make solid versions of the Wrecking Crew. The Mighty Thor objects. So I would actually, honestly, I would prefer legacy cards for the Wrecking Crew because I love that Wrecking Crew. Those figures, they just need to be taken down. Like the 75-point figures should probably be like 50 or something, honestly. Um, they just need some point adjustments more than anything. But uh, I would love legacy cards because I think that is a great version of the Wrecking Crew. It's really, really good. So, yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down for some legacy cards of the Wrecking Crew and of the objects. Give us some object packs. Little mini legacy card packs that are the size of objects, and it's just for the Mighty Thor objects or like, um, whatever gold meal near silver meal near, you know. And doesn't make them relics, you know, makes them objects instead. Yeah, pretty good. I'd be down for that. Those are fun little pieces. Although silver yeah. is just, I think it's just like a heavy or something. I think it's just a heavy object. Yeah, I guess they can make they can make it do something though. They could. Yeah, I mean we've got. Ooh, stack give of us a legacy for the Uru for... Forge too. Yeah, cool. <laughs> legacy card for I, I'd really like. So I'm trying to save my legacy card hype for like rares and super rares because at as of this point we haven't seen a whole lot of chases. Um, I'd really like to see the Annihilators back in play, and because Beta Ray oh. Bill was part of them at one point, I'm like, which which Beta Ray if like if you know. In my opinion, if they actually did it, which one would they go with? Because there's only the Fast Forces from Galactic Guardians, the um, Chase from Mighty Thor, and then I think after that he hasn't been clicked like ever. Oh, isn't there's got to be a Hammer of Thor beta, isn't there? I don't think so. There well, is. At least I had. I just least checked. The Annihilators. They're oh, not with Annihilators. Is no. One. Yeah, there is one. It's not an Annihilator's keyword, yeah. But, I mean, I'd be cool with that one, the Hammer of Thor Ooh. one. Give him... No, you're really going to get some... You're going to get the Critical Mass Beta Ray Bill. That's, That's the one you're going to get. Uh, um, running Shot, Super Strength, 11 for 4, 16 defense, invulnerability, uh, top dial. 144 points. No. That's so yeah. bad. That's good. That's 11 fine. for 4 is actually solid top dial with Running yeah. Shot. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. They'd have to give him a couple traits and stuff. Some tweaks. Some yeah. tweaks. Stats wise, he's almost better than the uh, Hammer of Thor one. The sculpt is pretty bad, though. They make that ugly boy look real ugly. I mean, he is he is a strange horse man thing. Yeah. So. Half devil, half horse, some say. Ah, uh, there it is. They call him Caballo Diablo. Bio de Bill de Beta Rabillo. He's definitely atop the Sierra Madre. That's for sure. Oh, dude, you know he is. All right, I think we've we've milked as much possible <laughs> HeroClix content uh, as we could for this yeah. incredibly, incredibly dry week. So let's just go back to talking about inscription. You know, hey, how about being able to apparently hook the moon? How cool is that? Not just kidding. Never tried that. I never, never had the, I was gonna say have never had the hook. Uh, no, so no, I've never kept the hook that long. Because the, yeah, I 
I usually have to use it against the uh, Trapper boss. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I've used it against the Fisher boss too. Um, no, I was going to say... I think there's an the, achievement the, for the stinky hooking thing, us. The stinky uh, little whatever... Oh, symbol? ...will yeah. work on the moon. So you can bring it down to zero does zero damage. damage. And oh my you know gosh. what else works on the moon? The one hit insta death. Like if you have the oh, adder, really, yeah, yeah, you can one shot the moon with that. <laughs> That's bad. That's yeah. bad. That's bad the, game design, guys. The, the is, moon should be immune to those things. <laughs> the worst part is like there's a special dialogue for the the smell one, where uh, Leshy will be like that doesn't even make any sense. The moon has no nose or like something like along those right. lines. There is no special dialogue for one shotting it with like you a poison, poison, poison yeah. the moon. Yeah. Is it, guess what? Doesn't make any sense to poison the freaking moon. Goodness gracious. Wow. 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 Okay. That is actually enough inscription talk. I didn't actually mean to, to do that, but um, that is funny. I didn't know those things. I didn't know those things. I feel um, like it's going to be one of those games where you just constantly like gonna have to constantly it. replay it. I honestly want to replay as much as I hated the second mode, the top down Pokemon mode. Um, I do want to try actually like deck building, not the wizard for a long time, but like a bone heavy deck or yeah. something because that was definitely the least I played. It's a uh, well, yeah, the least I played was wizard, but it's an easy yeah. deck if you have things that like you can place for free. Uh, if you yes. place stuff for free, then it's, a, it's, you know, something you can get away with. Um, and if you want to know what we're talking about, you can go over to coolstuffinc.com and check out the inscription of abundance. It's a rare magic card and, uh, it won't let you know at all what we're talking about, but it does have oh. a similar name to what we're talking about. So you'll at least know how to almost spell it. Uh, you know, just swap a I and a Y and if you do that, I mean, you're already at CoolStuffInc.com. You might as well tell them that we sent you with code DIAL5 for 5% off. I guess that's the ad read. I don't know. Oh, is that the ad? Is that I what guess. we're going to go with? I, I mean, <laughs> happy trails then, if that's what we're going with. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails. 